Hello and welcome to the second in this series of podcasts produced by Community Works in partnership with voluntary sector partners across Ada and Worthing. The aim of the podcasts, which are being produced during the COVID-19 pandemic, is to ensure that local groups and projects are aware of the support and services available for people in need locally. My name's Emma Bars, and today we're joined by Lizette from Citizens Advice in West Sussex. Lizette's going to be talking to you about the range of support that they can provide to local people and how people can access support from them, so referral routes. Without further ado, I hand over to you, Lizette. Thank you everyone for having me join you today to tell you more about who Citizens Advice is, uh, what we do and how we're doing it. And uh, I'd just like to first start off uh, talking about our structure and uh, how, how we operate. So Citizens Advice is a national charity with local Citizens Advice offices spread around England and Wales. And each local Citizens Advice is also a registered charity. So we're all a member yeah. of the national charity. Okay. Mm. So together we form Citizens Advice. And the Citizens Advice that I'm speaking to you today from is Citizens Advice in West Sussex, North South East. And for short, we call ourselves CAUSE. And that covers eight locations. That's East Grinstead, Crawley, Horsham, Haywards Heath, Burgess Hill, Shoreham, Lansing and Worthing. So that's quite a, a large geographical area that we cover. And obviously as a charity we are a funded service and we rely heavily on funding. Our funding is made up of mainly two aspects. The first is that we have a core service which is mostly funded by West Sussex County Council and we do get some funding as well from local councils in our geographical areas. And this funding is there to deliver a generalist advice service, which is primarily run by volunteers. So we have a large pool of volunteers uh, spread out around West Sussex that uh, very kindly give up some time to, to volunteer for us. We also get some project funding from local uh, services to or organisations to deliver localised specialist projects. So we have a Macmillan welfare rights team who give specialist welfare rights advice to people who have a cancer diagnosis or who are terminally ill. We also have some local funding from certain councils to deliver, to deliver homelessness prevention advice. And we get some funding as well from national citizens advice to deliver projects around specialist debt casework. So that's some of the local project funding that, that we get to deliver specialised work and, and there's, there's many more. But what we can do and provide uh, and how we can provide it largely depends on the funding that we have at a given time. But at the core of what we do, there are certain aims and principles that we aim to achieve. So I'll start by talking about our aims. So our aims are twofold and that's to provide advice for the problems people face and to improve the policies and practices that affect people's lives. So what this means is when somebody comes to us for advice, we don't just help with tackling the problem that they've come in to talk to us about. We also look for unfair practices and policies that might be affecting those problems. And this is actually what makes our organisation so unique um, because we look at the wider, wider world and, and see what, could, what changes could be done. So we collect evidence when clients come to us with, with their problems and then we use that evidence to lobby and campaign and, and then to affect change. So some of the things you might have seen in the news or around in the local area that we've been working on is that we've raised awareness around things like scams awareness and also bailiff reform. And we also keep in regular contact with MPs to explain to them the difficulties that our residents are facing with things like universal credit or rogue landlords might, might be a, a topic. And so we, we do quite a lot of work in the background to, to look at how we can affect change. And at the heart of it, there are four core principles by which we operate under. So these four principles are that we are free. So we don't charge anyone for the services we offer and we don't expect anything in return for the advice that we give. We're also confidential. 
So we don't share the information that they provide to us with anyone without their consent. So if a client would like us to talk to a third party organisation, that's absolutely fine, we can do that, but we would need their consent to be able to do that under data protection. And likewise, if there's a third party organisation um, who would like to discuss a mutual client with us, we also need consent um, from their client to say that they give permission for us to, to share their information with them. So it is possible for us to do uh, more work with other organisations, we just need to get the consents right and, and make sure we've got the appropriate consents to be able to talk to each other. Otherwise, if, if somebody phones us and asks to talk about a client, unfortunately, we do have to say, I'm sorry, but without consent, we're not able to, to discuss this any further. But as long as we have the consents, then that's absolutely fine. We're also impartial. So we will help anyone regardless of who they are. We won't be judgmental and we try and remain, well, we do remain objective and make sure that we don't take sides with government bodies. So we're, we're not there to take sides. And we're also independent. So we make sure clients know that citizens advice is independent from government and local authorities. And that although we may get funding from government bodies, we don't actually share any client information with government bodies. And we also do reassure clients as well that if there is a case for it and we need to challenge an official body or a large organization, then we will do this. And that's a really important aspect for why sometimes clients approach us for advice. Often it's around this that they, they often need help with. So why do people contact us for advice? Well, many of our um, clients and many people in general have experienced problems and challenges in life and navigating through that can be incredibly complex and difficult and they may need help to overcome those challenges. So we use our skills and expertise to help people through those difficulties. And for a lot of people, we're actually the, the first port of uh, call for advice. Um, so they know us, they trust us, and, and they know they can, they can turn to us based on our four core principles. So I just want to talk to you a bit about some of the, the core topics that we cover and uh, just fill you in about what we can help with when somebody comes to see us for advice. So one of the areas that we help with is benefits, and that may include doing benefit checks, helping them with benefit claims, challenging any benefit decisions if they feel a wrong decision was made to stop their benefit, or for example, if they've been sanctioned, that's the sort of thing we can, we can have a look at. And it's really important that people get the right advice about their benefits, particularly because of the introduction of universal credit. Not everyone at the moment has to claim universal credit at the moment. Some people have to claim it and others have a choice whether to claim it or remain on the current benefit system that, or, the, or the current benefits that they are on. And if they choose to claim it, some may be worse off. And the problem is once you trigger universal credit, you cannot go back. So we work hard to give people advice on the right benefit entitlements to make sure that it's the, the best thing for their circumstances. So if you get anyone who, who needs help with benefits, then please do signpost them to us as this is one of our uh, speciality core areas. We also advise on housing, and this could include things around uh, repair issues with a landlord. If a landlord's refusing to carry out repairs and the client feels that they should be doing the repairs. We also deal with issues around harassment by landlords and eviction issues. And we can also give homelessness advice to clients if, if that's also something that they need advice on. Another core area that we give advice on is debt and budgeting. And we're actually a, a, a regulated uh, de debt advice uh, service. So we, we are accredited to give debt advice um, from the Financial Conduct Authority. And our advice in this can range in many different aspects. So we can give, for example, budgeting advice to show them where they can be making savings in their budget um, and where they uh, could maybe switch 
to uh, cheaper services if they're using particularly high serv bills with high services. So um, we, we can have a look at that as well. And we can also help them to give full debt advice, which may involve preparing a financial statement and outlining their options of getting out of debt. And if part of that process, they need help with negotiating with creditors or bailiffs, we can also help them with that aspect as well. And we do have specialist debt caseworkers that we can get clients connected to if they have more complex debt work that is required. Um, so that's something we can also look at. So again, if you get anyone who's uh, having issues with debt and budgeting, then please do signpost them to us for advice. We also give advice around employment. So uh, this may include problems with pay, not receiving the right wages or not receiving the right holiday pay or statutory sick pay and many other areas around pay. We also give advice um, in employment around grievances at work, uh, dismissal, unfair dismissal, and a particularly um, big topic at the moment with COVID is redundancy. People are starting to face redundancy situations and it is on the rise. And so this is something that we're helping people navigate through and work out, for example, are they receiving um, redundancy, the right redundancy pay? Have they been made redundant in the right way? And does it actually count as a redundancy? So there's quite a lot of things to identify and employment law can in particular be really complicated. And a lot of people's rights depend on how long they have worked there for. But that's something we can help the clients navigate through and we also have a, a volunteer employment specialist who can help with more complex employment issues. And as well as this, we also give information on relationship breakdown. This may involve um, things around divorce or separation, access rights to children if two sides um, are not able to decide how uh, children should be contacted or where they should live then we have information on their options and what they can do about this situation and in particular domestic abuse as well so this is also an area that um, is quite prominent at the moment and we're getting increased calls at the moment around domestic abuse and that's definitely something that we can help people navigate through and we can also help link them into other services so other dom domestic abuse advice services or we can help get linked to affordable legal help um, as well as access to legal aid if they qualify for legal aid. So that's um, the, what we can cover around relationship breakdown and many more aspects around affordability after a relationship breakdown. We also give immigration advice. So we are accredited to give OICS, which stands for Office of the Immigration Services Commissioner, um, and it's OICS level one immigration advice. So this is basic immigration advice around uh, applying for visas or coming to live in the UK through other formats. It may include also advice around EU settlement schemes. So the, the EU settlement process is quite a hot topic at the moment, particularly because the deadline is December uh, 2020. There is some deadlines being mentioned around June for the EU settlement scheme. However, this really depends on whether we leave with a deal or without a deal. So we're telling everybody to stick to the December deadline for applying for the EU settlement scheme. So again, if you have an EU resident um, who needs some advice around the EU settlement scheme or how to settle their status, then please do suggest that they, they contact us. And of course, we also give immigration advice to people coming from outside of the EU as, as part of that. If the level of immigration advice they need is complicated um, and is beyond level one immigration advice, then we may have to signpost or refer them to other organisations that can give that more detailed advice. Another area that we give advice on is consumer. And this uh, could include for example, advice around faulty goods. It could be energy problems, needing to switch to a cheaper energy supplier, and we can help facilitate that switch and identify that cheaper supplier. And as mentioned with our research and campaigns work, we, we also advise around scams awareness and also try and help people navigate through scams problems. 
And we also have a dedicated consumer helpline for specialist consumer advice that clients can use as well to get more com complex advice if that's what's needed. And the key thing to um, know about all these topics um, that I've just mentioned, so benefits, housing, debt, employment, relationship breakdown, immigration, consumer, they, they all interlink to each other. So if a client has a problem with any of those issues, they, they often have a problem with multiple other areas as well. And we try to take a holistic approach around their circumstances. So we uh, explore all around the issue to make sure that we're not missing anything. And all of our areas, all of these areas can be really complex and our advisors have gone through extensive training to be able to deliver advice in many of these areas. And they also um, on, go on ongoing training to um, keep their skills and knowledge up to date so that they can stay up to date with what's, what's happening. Um, so that's a bit about the type of advice that we give and um, what people might come and approach us for. So I'd like to just turn to how do we give this advice um, and, and what happens when the client comes to our service. So when the client approaches our service, we do an initial assessment to explore the complexity of the problem together with the capacity and capability that they have in, in order to find a way forward. So as part of this, we do assess any emergencies and time limits that may affect the situation. And of course, our goal is to empower the client wherever possible to help give them control or, or better control over their situation. And we know that if we can empower the client, this will have a much more lasting effect. But we do accept that, of course, um, some clients will fall in a vulnerable category. That means they, they will need that extra support. So they, they may need a more tailored approach. So we do try and tailor our approach according to the client's needs and capacity. And so what this means is that we look at things such as, do they have access to the internet? their literacy skills, their ability to make phone calls, and whether they've got any learning difficulties, that may, may also be a part of it. Of course, there isn't a one fits all approach though, and the approach has to be tailored to suit the needs of the client. So that's something we try and work with them when they come to us in that initial interview to, to find the best way forward. And out of this initial interview, some clients will just need assisted information to take away and to decide for themselves. This may include signposting to other services if we think there is another service out there that can help them better, but they know they can come back to us if, if they need further help. Other clients, of course, will need more detailed advice and we can book some appointments um, to go through things in more detail. And this will involve identifying and matching their rights and responsibilities to the problems that they face. Once we've established their rights, then we can explain their options and outline the pros and cons of each option to help them make an informed decision about which way to go. But the key aspect about this is that it is the client's decision about what option they want to pursue. It's not about us telling them what to do or it's not about us doing absolutely everything for them. If they need help actioning anything, then of course we will help them to action those steps. But as mentioned, we, we do work on a process of trying to empower the client to be able to um, navigate better through the situation. And if the client has multiple inquiry areas and they need ongoing support and advice, then of course we can book follow on appointments and there's no limit as to how many appointments they can have. We can book as many follow on appointments as, as is needed to be able to resolve that issue. And of course, if we recognize that the client needs specialist advice in certain areas, then we can look to booking them appointments with specialist teams. For example, as mentioned earlier, we have an employment specialist that deals with complex employment law issues and we can also book them with the debt specialists um, once we've identified where all the emergencies lie and what the most pressing issues are. So 
what does this mean though for clients who need help with food because that's quite a big aspect of what we do as well clients often come to us because they need help with food and we are food bank voucher holders as well and we know which services to refer and signpost them to well, if a client approaches us, we do exactly the same approach. So we apply exactly the same approach to any other client who's coming in to talk about other areas. So we explore holistically around the problem and we try and identify what the root cause is resulting in the client needing help with food because we know that if we can get them that help with food, that's only going to be a short term crisis. It doesn't actually address what the the longer term issues are um, and so we try and identify those longer term issues so we can find sustainable solutions um, to the problems that they face and the key things to to note about this is that of course part of it is managing the client's expectation that what they want may not necessarily be what they need or uh, it may not be possible um, in terms of the wider advice process and if it's not something that's within our remit then we have to be honest about that and explain why it's not within our remit and what other services may be able to help and of course we also have to as part of the managing their expectation in the process we, we have to um, try and make it clear that we will be working with them to try and find a solution but this may not be resolved all on one session and we may have to book follow-on sessions and it may take some time to resolve it so it may not all get done in out of that one session but of course in order for the client to make the most out of our help they have to be ready to engage with the advice and some clients um, for many reasons may not be ready to engage and this could be, the reasons could be because of things like um, they, they may feel that they're, they're going to be judged if they come and seek advice. Some clients have said they feel embarrassed about seeking advice. And um, for some, the health may be affecting them. And so, for example, they might be suffering from depression and anxiety, which can really have um, a big impact on their ability to, to navigate through things. So for a lot of people, it takes a lot of courage for them to come and seek advice. And they even say to us, it's, you know, it's taken a lot out of them just to come in through the door, which is quite a big thing. And that's where empathy really plays an important part. Um, and we try to build that rapport with the clients to help um, uh, to establish a trust between us so that we're able to give them the support and advice that they need. But of course, we're not trained counsellors. So if a client um, does need help in this respect, then we're likely to signpost or refer to an appropriate organisation for this. And we need to make it clear to clients that, that we're not counsellors. So if they need somebody to talk to beyond the issues that they, they face, we, we may end up having to signpost for that. So in a nutshell, that's our work and, and, and what we do and, and how we do it. Um, and uh, I, I think what's really important to talk about as well is how can people access our service during this time? So obviously COVID has changed the way people can access our service. And we've had to adapt and change the way we work to help as much uh, as possible and to help as many people as possible. So at the moment we're running primarily a digital service and this digital service comprises of people phoning us via our advice line or they can go on our website and they can use our web chat facility and they can start chatting to an advisor via web chat and they can also send us an email um, if they go on our website again they'll be able to um, enter in an email which will get sent to us We've also got a service for clients who um, have hearing impairments or who are deaf. We run a BSL line, that's the British Sign Language line, and they can use that process to engage with us if they're not able to use other channels through this time. And we've actually developed um, a, a lot of different things during this time to be able to help clients digitally, and particularly with 
complex issues that might need you, for example, to see paperwork or if you're helping with form filling, we've developed unique ways of working. So, for example, we might suggest to a client that they either email us the paperwork if they have capacity to do that or send it in the post or drop it off at one of the offices. We do have skeleton staff still in the office that can take paperwork from people and we can offer um, pre-arranged emergency face-to-face -face appointments if they're needed and we decide this on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's there for emergency cases but we also um, recognise that there are people with limited digital access that may need these emergency face-to-face -face services. So by arrangement, we, we can make um, allowances to be able to see people face to face and, and then go from there. And some of the work we've done to um, kind of help navigate through this time with clients is we're working closely with the hubs and we've taken referrals from the hubs and from professionals to be able to access a wider pool of clients who might be isolated during this time. So we're, we're trying to access um, uh, as many people as possible and, and have people access us as, men, as much as possible. So these are just some of the ways that, that we're working towards um, at the moment. So hopefully that's given you an, an insight um, into some of the aspects that we cover and how we do things and why we do things as a citizen's advice. And if there's any questions that anybody has, or if there's anything you would like clarified, then I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to, to go through that with you. A huge thank you to you, Lizette. That was a really helpful overview of a really broad range of services and support that you can provide. I think what's really clear is that for you, working in partnership with grassroots projects in Ada and Worthing is really crucial to give people the confidence around the knowledge that you've got to support them with a number of problems that they might be facing, particularly in the context of lockdown. People listening can access citizens advice, contact details, referral information, as well as self-help guides that they've got using the links on the screen now and in the about box for this podcast. This series of podcasts is being produced by Community Works within our Ada and Worthing Food Partnership project, and it's made possible with funding from the National Lottery.